So now let's look at the topic of permutation in more details. So what is permutation? This represents the several possible ways in which a set or number of things can be ordered or arranged. For instance, in how many ways can three men be arranged? So now I'm going to label the men as A, B, C. So the first man is A, second man is B, and the third man is C. So the possible ways in which I can arrange them in a row will include A, C, A, B, C, then A, C, B, B, A, C, B, C, A, C, A, B, and T, B, A. So if we count the number of possible ways, we get what? Six ways. So six can also be written as three times two times one, which is equals to three factorial. So we're going to introduce a new concept here called the factorial. And what is the factorial? In general, n factorial is given as n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times all the way to 1. So like in our previous example now, we got 3 factorial. So we know that what 3 factorial, the number of ways in which 3 men can be arranged, which is 3 factorial, equals to 3 times 2 times 1, which is equals to 6. So now let's try to evaluate the following. And the first we'll be doing is what? 5 factorial. So what does 5 factorial equal to? So similarly, 5 factorial will just be equal to 5, then reduce it by 1. So you multiply by 4, reduce it by 1 also. You get 3, multiply by 2, multiply by 1. So you keep multiplying it by one less of the previous number till you get to one and when you multiply all this together you get 120 so five factorial is 120 how about six factorial six factorial will become six times five times four times three times two times one and when you multiply all this together you get 720 so let's apply this knowledge to solve this question. In how many ways can the word fact be arranged? So we know that fact is made up of what four distinct letters, F, A, C, and T. So the number of ways that the word fact can be arranged is just what four factorial because we have four unique numbers and that will be equals to what four times three times two times one which gives us 24. So the word facts can be written in 24 ways. So you can try to figure that out by manipulating the order and see if you're able to write it in 24 different ways. So let's consider a scenario now, a race consisting of four athletes. So imagine a racing competition. So in how many ways can the first and second position be taken? So you have a race consisting of four athletes, but only the first and the second positions are going to be given prizes. So let's label the athletes as A, B, C, D. So the first athlete is A, second athlete is B, third athlete is C, fourth one is D. So what are the possibilities? Possibilities include A coming first and B coming second, or A coming first and C coming second, or A coming first and D coming second, B coming first and C coming second, D coming first and D coming second, C coming first and D coming second. Also, if you reverse this over here, it's possible that instead of A becoming first, B become first, Y A becomes second, and the same applies to by just reversing the letters in each of these, and that is what you have down here. So if you look at this critically, you can see that A becoming first and B becoming second is not the same as B becoming first and A becoming second. So AB and BA are two unique sets because in the first set over here, AB, A is first and B is second. Why in the second set, B is first and A is second. So there are two entirely different things. So if you count how many possible ways in which you can figure out such arrangement, when we had all this together, we get it as was 12 possible ways. So you can see that it's possible for us to write it down, but sometimes 
it might be impossible to write. For instance, imagine we are, have a competition in which we have 100 athletes, or that is an exaggeration, let's say 10 athletes, and we want to just give prizes to 3 people. Obviously, we cannot write everything out because it will be too time consuming. So how do we figure it out? Before we go into a scenario like that, I'm going to give you the logic behind this example that we've just solved. So now the four athletes that we just saw, which are A, B, C, and D, and we have to give two positions to be given out and the other matters. So now what I'll do now is I'm going to draw some platform here. So this platform goes to the first position and this platform goes to the second position. So if you think, if you think of it this way, so now you know that there are four people, A, B, and C, and D. So how many people can possibly take the first position? One, two, three, four. There are four possible people that can take the position. So I write four here because there are four potential candidates for the first position. But after one of them has been chosen as the first, let's assume we take one away from it. Then how many people will become contenders for the second position? You see that you'll be left to just three contenders for the second position. So I write out my three down. So when I multiply it together, 4 times 3, what do I get? I still get 12 ways. So this is an intuitive way to think about arrangements when the order matters. So in general, if an operation can be performed in P ways and another operation in Q ways, then the number of ways of performing the two operations, one after the other, is P times Q ways. So back to our example over here. The number of ways in which the first position can be given can be given to four potential candidates and for the second position can be given to three potential candidates so the number of possible ways is what four times three which is equals to 12. now let's look at another example in how many ways can i select first second and third from 10 athletes so yeah i have 10 athletes now and i don't write it out and how many positions do i have to distribute i have three positions to distribute so I have the first position, the second position, and the third position. But now we have a group of 10 athletes. So the first position can be gotten or can be occupied by any of the 10 athletes. So there are 10 contenders for the first position. So after one of them wins the first position, there are many contenders are left for the second position. You have just 9 contenders left for the second position. And after the second position has been occupied, how many contenders do you have left for the third position? You have just eight positions, eight athletes contending for the third position. So if you multiply them together, 10 times 9 times 8, that gives us 720 ways. So there are 720 ways in which the first, second, and third position can be selected from a group of 10 athletes. But now, trying to figure this out, we can use a general way to express questions like this. And that is where the formula for permutation comes in. So, in permutation terms, we can write it as 4 permutation 2. So, what this means, based on our first example, is that we have 4 people contesting. And we are trying to see the ways in which 2 positions can be filled. So, it's written as 4 permutation 2. In the second case... We have 10 athletes and we have 3 positions that be contended. So it can be written as what? 10 permutation 3. So I'll now present to you the formula for permutation. So in general, when you have n permutation r, it is given by n factorial over n minus r factorial. And this represents the permutation of n objects taking r at a time. So if we apply this formula to our previous examples, in the first world, we had four athletes contending for two positions, which is four permutation two. So what would that give me? Formula says I have n factorial and recall the number up here will be my n and the number down here will be my r. So n is four and my r is two. So I have four factorial over, then my n here is four and my r is two. So I have four minus two factorial. So that becomes 4 factorial over 4 minus 2 gives me 2 factorial. So 4 factorial, as I've explained, is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Why 2 factorial is 2 times 1? 
two cancels out two and i'm left with four times three which gives me 12 ways which is what we got with the previous methods now let's move on to the second one where we had 10 permutation theory so per 10 permutation 3 will be equal to 10 factorial over 10 minus 3 factorial based on this formula so you have to memorize this formula so you have about 10 factorial over 10 minus 3 is 7 factorial so we know that 10 factorial can be written as 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 i can write this now as 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 but that would be really long all the way up to world but I can just abbreviate it times 7 factorial because I know that when I expand this, I still have 7 times 6 times 5 times 4. Then divided by 7 factorial. So this makes me easy for me to cancel out my 7 factorial. So I don't need to write out 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 and write the same thing down and start canceling out. So this is a short way in which you can just stop at 7 factorial. If you see that, you can easily cancel it out by another factorial in the denominator. So when you multiply 10 by 9 by 8, you get 720 ways, which is also what we got previously. So let's extend our idea now and try to evaluate the following. So the first one, we want to evaluate 7 permutation form. So we are given the formula of n permutation r to be given as n factorial over n minus r factorial. So what does this become? My n in this case is 7 and my r is what? 4. So I have what? 7 factorial over 7 minus 4 factorial. And that gives me 7 factorial over 3 factorial. So I'm going to expand this till I get to 3 factorial so I can cancel it out. So this becomes 7 times 6 times 5 times 4. Then times, I just write it as 3 factorial. Then this is... 3 factorial. So the 3 factorial can cancel out. And I've explained why I do that. So 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 gives us 840. So 7 permutation 4 is 840. How about 9 permutation 5? I want you to try that on your own now. And pause the video. If you have tried that out now, you should get something like n factorial over, sorry, 9 factorial over 9 minus 5 factorial. So that what that gives me that becomes 9 factorial over 9 minus 5 is 4 factorial. And that will give me what? 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 factorial over 4 factorial. So this 4 factorial can cancel out. And I'm left with 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5, which gives me 15,120. Now, let's look at some useful mentions and some important things to note. And the first one is 1 factorial. So, you should have it at the back of your mind that 1 factorial is equals to 1. And the same thing applies. 0 factorial is also equals to 1. You should try to memorize this. 0 factorial is 1. There's, a, there's an interesting proof to this. We're not going to be able to go through it because you don't really need to know the proof. All you need to know is that 0 factorial is also equals to 1. So let's try to look at some useful mentions which include 3 permutation 3. So we know that our formula n permutation r is equals to n factorial over n minus r factorial. So what does this become? This becomes 3 factorial over 3 minus 3 factorial. And that becomes 3 factorial over 0 factorial. And we know that 0 factorial is 1. So this becomes 3 factorial over 1, which is equal to 3 factorial. So 3 permutation 3 is equal to 3 factorial, which is same as having 3 times 2 times 1, which is equal to 6. So in general, when you have a number, say 4 permutation 4, it's going to just be equal to what? 4 factorial. Same thing, 10 permutation 10 is also going to be equal to 10 factorial. And so on and so forth. How about 7 permutation 1, for instance? So that becomes 7 factorial over 7 minus 1 factorial, which becomes 7 factorial over 6 factorial, which becomes 7 times 6 factorial over 6 factorial. And the 6 factorials cancel out, and I'm left with 7. So in general, when my R is 1, for instance, N permutation R, permutation 1. The answer is going to be n. 
So 8 permutation 1 is equals to 8. 100 permutation 1 is equals to 100 and so on and so forth. So let's talk about the idea of cyclic permutation. So what I've been talking about before now, I refer to as linear permutation, meaning that what we're trying to arrange are in a single row. But how about the case in which I have a circular arrangement? For instance, look at the number of people sitting around the circular table. One, two, three, four, five. Let's assume they were sitting on a bench. So I have a straight bench and five of them are sitting down there, which are called A, B, C, D, E. If I ask you the total number of ways in which they can be arranged, you know that this will just be equals to 5 factorial, which is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. But now they are sitting on a circular table. Now the issue with circular table is that when you have a cycle, you cannot really say this is the start of the cycle. For a bench, I know where the start is and I know where the end of the bench is. But for a cycle, I don't know where the start and the end is. Any place can be chosen as the start. So what we do is that we just assume that one of the positions, let's call this position, is fixed and is the starting point. As soon as you've selected them as a fixed person, then we are left with all just four people. So when we have this kind of arrangement, we just do our permutation for the remaining four people after we have taken one person to be constant. And we do that because there is no specified start and end in the circular arrangement. So instead of having five factorial if they were sitting on the bench, we just have what four factorial because we pick one of the person as a constant. So in general, the number of ways of arranging circular object is given as n minus one. So if there are five people, you minus one away from it, then you find the factorial that gives you the number of ways of arrangement in circular object. So let's take a look at this example. In how many ways can six members of a board of director of a company be seated around? A circular table so you have a circular table and you have the six members of the board a b c d e and f seated around it so you have six people so in how many ways can it be arranged so instead of having six factorial when we have a circular arrangement the number of arrangements is given as what based on our formula n minus one factorial so what we do is that we minus one since there are six people around to just say 6 minus 1 factorial so 6 minus 1 is 5 factorial and 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 and that is equals to 120 ways so there are 120 ways in which six members of a board of director of a company can be seated around a circular table so now what if the circular objects can be inverted so in our previous example, you had them sitting around a table. There's no way you can flip it to the other side. But imagine a scenario in which you have a bead. So you see this bead over here, you have like smaller beads around it. But this bead is facing up. You can take this bead and flip it to the other side. And it will be exactly the same thing. So you can either have the head facing or the back facing because you can easily flip up a bead. So when the circular object can be fl flipped, or can be inverted then the formula for calculating the number of possible ways is just a formula for calculating normal circular arrangement then we divide it by two to account for the two possible faces and that's all all these formulas you have to do well to try to memorize them so let's take a look at an example so in how many ways can seven bits of different colors be traded in a circular ring so you have a circular ring And you have seven bits of different color one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So, in how many ways can you arrange it? So, our formula tells us that the number of ways you can arrange it if the object can be inverted, and we know that a bit can be inverted. So, this just becomes n minus one factorial over two, and that gives me what my n is seven minus one factorial over two, and that gives me. 6 factorial over 2. Now, if you simplify 6 factorial, you have 6 times 5 times 4. And when you evaluate everything, you should get 360. So there are 360 ways 
in which this can be arranged. 6 factorial is 7 to 80. When you divide by 2, you get 360 ways. Now, let's look at permutation involving indistingu indistinguishable objects. So, let's consider the possible permutations of the word food. Now, if you look at this word carefully, food, how many ways can I arrange it? The first thing that will come to you instinctively is to calculate the number of letters you have. So, you have four letters. And by instinct, you might just want to write out four factorial. But if you look at it carefully, we have two letters that are the same, this O and this O. And these two O's are totally indistinguishable. There is no way you can tell apart which O and which O is this because they look exactly alike. So when you have situations like this, how do we deal with it? Because we know that we cannot just apply a formula directly because these letters are not distinct. So we'll make use of this formula. So in general, the number of ways of permuting N objects Taking n at a time with n one objects alike. So this is a type of Kafka ego. This is supposed to be alike. N two objects alike. Up to n one objects alike. And n one plus n two with the all the way up to n i is equals to n is this. So let's apply this to our formula to find the number of ways we can permutate food. So the number of ways you can permutate food, the total numbers that we have here is what? 4. So we write out what? 4 factorial over. Then the first letter that we have is F. How many times does F appear? F appear only once. So we have 1 factorial. How about the letter O? The letter O appears twice. So we have 2 factorial. And the letter D appears just once. So we have 1 factorial. We know that 1 factorial and 1 factorial is 1. So we are left with 4 factorial, which is 4 times 3 times 2 factorial over 2 factorial. So this cancels this. And I'm left with 4 times 3, which is what? 12, 12 ways. So I want us to look at another example. And let me consider the word is. Now if you look at the word is, you can see that everything is distinct. So let's apply a formula. So, the total number of letters here is 3 factorial over A appears once, we have 1 factorial, C appears once, 1 factorial, E appears once, 1 factorial. 1 factorial is 1, one fa so 1 times 1 times 1 is 1, so we end up with 3 factorials. That was why when we add distinct letters, we didn't have to divide by anything, because dividing it by 1 factorial by 1 factorial, we still give us 1. But in this case, when you have repetition, or two numbers are like you can see that it's really important to divide by the numbers or the letters that are occurring multiple times. Let's take a look at this example. Find the number of different ways, different permutations of the letters of the word excellence. So the first thing we want to do is to find the number of letters there. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I have what 10 letters. So I have what divided by how many times does my letter E occur? My letter E appears 1, 2, 3, 4. It appears 4 times. So I just write 4 factorials. How about my letter X? It appears once. I don't need to write it out because I know that it's just going to be 1 and it won't have any effect. How about my letter C? My letter C occurs twice. So I definitely have to write that out. So times my 2 factorial. How about my letter L? My L appears also twice. So I need to write that out also. Times my 2 factorial. My letter N appears just once. So I don't need to write it out. So what does that give me? So my 10 factorial becomes 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 factorial over 4 factorial times 2 factorial is 2 times 1 which is 2 then I have times 2 4 factorial cancels 4 factorial 2 times 4 is 8 so 4 and 8 is 2 so if you multiply 10 by 9 by 2 by 7 by 6 and by 5 you should get 37,800 so there are 37,800 ways in which you can arrange the words the letters in the words excellence to recap, we didn't just say 10 factorial. 
you found 10 factorial then we divided it by the letters that we're repeating and in this case we had e appearing four times c appearing twice and the letter l appearing twice also now let's talk about conditional permutation so when some restrictions are placed on the order of arrangement of objects that are to be permuted we call it conditional permutations so what it just means in plain terms is that we are placing some specific restrictions to be followed so the way we deal with these restrictions is dependent on the nature of the problem so you, be, you have to be able to think about it clearly because all the old formulas and methods we've learned will survive so what you just need to do in this case is try to interpret the question and that is why it's very important that you understand the underlying concepts so let's take a look at this example to illustrate that point find the number of ways of permuting the letters of the word well such that in the first scenario the two L's will always be together and in the second case the two L's will always be apart so let's get started let's start with the first part in which the two L's will be together so if I write the word well and I want the two L's to always be together so how can this happen so if I draw my star over here so if they are always going to be together so it, I can see that what that means I can combine these two L's together as one as one because they always be together and they are indistinguishable also so if I take it together as one how many letters do I have all together I have just one two and three so I have one two three and that just gives me what three factorial and what will 3 factorial give me? 3 factorial will be equal to 3 times 2 and that will be equal to 6. And if we were to write it out, we can easily do that because these are the possible positions that can be occupied. So to list out the 6 possible ways, we can either have LLWE, the two years must get together, or we can have WLLE, or we can have WELL, or you can have L L E W or you can have E or you can have E L L W and finally you can have what E W L L. So these are the six possible ways in which you can arrange the words where if the two L's are to be together and because they are together and they are indistinguishable, I just took them as just what one. So instead of counting four factorial, we just counted three factorials and we got six ways. And when we try to verify it, we got this. So in the second scenario, when the two L's will always be apart. So how do we do that? We want to arrange the words well and the two L's will always be apart. So that means these are the possible positions that the L's can occupy. Can occupy this position. If one is occupying here, the other will occupy here, then I have E and E. So one of the L's will occupy one of this position, while the other will occupy one of the other position, and the last will occupy one of this final position. So if you look at it carefully, these two L's that are here represented here, the first position, you have three positions here. I want to find out how many of these two L's can fit here. So one of these L can move to just any one of these three positions. So this first L can fit into any of these three positions. So you have was three times. This second L can fit if one position is taken, you'll be left with two other positions. So it can fit into any of the remaining two positions. So you have what times two. That and since the two L's are indistinguishable. You know that I have to divide it by what? By two. Since you have just by two factorial, so that is divided by two. And now for this letter W and E now, I know that this W and E, you just have two letters. Either W is here and E is here, or E is here and W is here. So this way, the number of ways in which W and E can be arranged is just what? Times two factorials. So when I simplify this, I have 3 times 2 times 2 over 2 and that's it gives me what? 6 ways. So the number of ways in which they can be arranged 
if the two L's are to apart, coincidentally gives us the same value as six. So to recap again, the way we figured it out, we first identified the potential positions of L. So now the first L, we know that can occupy any one of these three positions. So that is three times why the second L can added, occupy any of the two remaining positions. So you have three times two, which is supposed to be six. But these two L's are indistinguishable because they are the same. And remember, when we have two indistinguishable letters, we have to divide it by the numbers of time it appears. So it's just two. So divide it by two factorial, which is two. Then now the remaining letters, which are W and E, can only occupy just two positions. So that will be two factorial. So multiply by what two factorial. And that is how we got six ways. So this pretty much sums up the idea of conditional permutation. So as you can see, trying to solve conditional permutation depends really on your understanding of the underlying principles. But luckily for you, conditional permutations do not really come out in jump. So if you know the many types of permutations we've talked about, you should be good to go. But it will really be an added advantage if you can try to master this conditional permutation. And the way to master permutation or anything in math in general is to practice. So I will urge you to look for questions in which you can try to practice these skills. So in the next section, we are going to talk about combination.